any longer, I probably would be supply blocked and it'd be a complete disaster. So here, this is another time I gotta take a little bit of a, a break and show you guys, tell you guys, this is where things differentiate. What unit to, you've made your stalkers, so you're safe from reapers, you're safe from, you know, like if two zealots were here, you could probably kite them all day, things like that. You are safe from that. What do you, what unit do you want to make next? This is at the time where you want to be scouting and making sure, for example, if it's a Terran player and he's going for marauders, you want to make a sentry. If it's a, if it's a Zerg player and he's rushing Zerglings, you want to make a zealots. If it's just a Protoss player and he's going mass stalker or something like that, or a mass zealot, you want to make another stalker. So, really key decisions like this because. It, Protoss don't get very many units in the early game, unlike the other races uh, where, for example, Terran can make Marines and a lot of Marauders, and Z Zerg can make a lot of Zerglings at the beginning. Each unit you make is going to be a key strategic s decision in the early game for Protoss. So let's keep on going here. Still making uh, making probes, and want to really guard this uh, chrono boost over here. So one, now that I'm pulling resources, I want to put my third gateway down. Notice I have one, two, three, and I've got a sentry coming down. And you want to put another pylon, because believe it or not, with chrono boost, you're going to hit this this uh, supply cap very, very quickly. So actually being very good here with my chrono boost, putting them almost back to back, I think, unless I wasn't paying attention. And then right around now, I, you want to actually be putting your fourth gateway down. I've actually queued up a third unit first, and then I'm going to put my fourth gateway down. And still producing pro probes and, you know, doing everything standard. And look at this, for example, this is more of a, like a scout force. This is general timing for a zerg. You want to make sure you block your ramp. This is why you went through all the trouble of putting these buildings like this, is so that you can block your ramp. Now, another pause right here. Where this gateway could have gone, this gateway could definitely been up like one extra hex over here, but in my opinion, that's a little bit too tight of a wall. Uh, once you start getting stalkers and immortals, this becomes a liability because you, units bunch up here, and it's very hard to get out of your base. And sometimes you want them to be able to get out very quickly. Now, if you're going mainly with a warp gate wheel with a gateway build, obviously it doesn't really matter how tight it is as long as you're warping your units outside, right? But uh, it's just a little consideration you want to take. Uh, I I don't generally wall off, as you might see in some of my videos. So I don't really... I, I, I like leaving it a little bit open because I'm more used to the, the wide feeling of the ramp. So I've got two gateways going down here, and look at this. Just as gateway is finishing, uh, warp gate technology is finishing, this unit, uh, this cell is going to be coming out, and this, this gateway is ready to be turned into warp gate. And this gateway is almost finished, it'd be turned into a warp gate. So you want to put another pylon down, and this is actually one mistake I did, because, uh, again, I'm not very... I, I don't do the warp gate building too much. Uh, this probe could have been hidden here, and he could have been putting that pylon down right here, or right here, or somewhere around here, you know, uh, as a proxy pylon right here, or anything over here. What that would enable you is that just as, just as warp gate is finishing, you can start pushing with these units out, and then warping units right here, and start being aggressive. This is normally when the the Protoss wants to be aggressive, especially against her. You want right after warp gate is finished, and you are able to get those extra units out of the warp gate technology. You want to start being aggressive. So definitely, the thing you want to focus on is getting these warp gates morphed in as soon as possible. Now that they take 10 seconds to morph. So, at this point guys, it's really, this is where it, it starts just kind of playing it by ear, more or less. I've warped in my zealots, look at this, I've got one, two, three, four zealots, f a stalker, and a sentry. So I can block my ramp if I want to, I can be aggressive if I want to, I can start pushing out, I can do whatever I want. And always keeping up with the supply, this is something you see me do a lot of times in my videos, I supply block myself, trust me, with warp gate it is so easy to actually start getting supply blocked, and I've actually used uh, chrono boost on a couple of the gateways, so I can start making more units, because I'm noticing that my opponent is being aggressive. So look at this, this is a very overwearing force for what my friend has right now, my opponent, these zealots... I mean, yeah, he took out a sentry and a stalker, but I still have all my zealots, and all he really has at the moment, all that he can really produce is, is uh, zerglings, because he's been focusing on his macro. But taking back a look at my base, around this time, guys, this is more or less where the tutorial ends. 
The next thing you want to do here is, as I'm pushing out here, notice that I am pulling resources and that I, am not, I did not warp units out of all my gateways, even though I still have a couple that uh, are on cooldown. Are cool down. You want to be putting your expansion out around this time, and this is just perfect timing because I am pushing out. My opponent is going to be busy trying to defend this. Look at this, he only has these Surglings, and he's not going to be able to really push me anytime soon. So at this point, I want to put down this this Nexus, and I want to continue start making probes, which I actually do not do because I was a little distracted, uh, not going to lie. But you want to start making probes and possibly chrono boosting these, because once this expansion is up to about this this done this much done you want to start transferring your probes and it's going to vary a little bit by map uh how early you do it or anything like that but this just basically this is what you want to do if you are starting out if you want to test out the protoss this is a very safe build the four gate build is very strong especially against the zerg if you do early pressure if you start making zealots instead of waiting for the first stalker and I'm gonna put this on on faster, and I'm just gonna go ahead and gear back here to the to the fight, and look at how strong this build is. The Zerg really doesn't want it. he he wants to focus on macro as much as possible. He's gonna ahead and harass me a little bit. It was actually I think a kind of a mistake because he should have kept those Zerglings that he had over there for for defense. But th this is a tutorial, so we weren't really looking to show you you know like epic gameplay or anything like that. We were just trying. I, I was I told them you know try to be a little bit less aggressive because I need to make sure I, I get all the timings right. But look at this. I'm actually putting this <laughs> this proxy pylon, which is a little bit late. And I am. Uh, this is so many units. I mean, he has nothing. He's losing his hatchery, and I've got all these units right in front of him. So this is why the four warp gate build is very, very, very strong, and it is very safe for for a lot of the lower level players. I think. Look at this. I have a, a sentry here to force field. If I see that I'm being overwhelmed, I can just force field this ramp and run away as soon as possible. And really, not much else is going to happen. Uh, this is definitely an overwhelming force for my friend. He is not going to be able to take this on anytime soon. And I hope you guys have really, like, for those Protoss players, or those of you that are other races and you're wondering what exactly the timings are for Protoss, uh, if you're doing a 4 warp gate build, this is more or less what it's going to look like most of the time. So definitely, just to, to reiterate, you want to get on your probes really quickly. You want to be strategic with how you use uh, your chrono boost. That's something you'll hear me say sometimes on the replies when people uh, are talking to me about chrono boost. You want to be strategic on how you use it. There's nothing wrong with pulling it, but you definitely don't want it to sit at 100 and 100. That's the bad thing when you let it sit. So look at this. Uh, this is where you want to be playing as a Protoss player around 10 minutes in the game. You either want to have a standing army, like if you're getting pushed a lot, you want to have a standing army. You're probably not, not going to be able to expand. You don't have to freak out if you can't expand because your opponent's being very aggressive. But if he's not, and if you're being the aggressor, you definitely want to be expanding. I've actu I actually stopped production from units for a little bit, and just to talk about the gas thing that I was talking to you guys, if you look at this, 498 gas and 500 minerals, I actually probably slipped my macro a little bit here from reduction. This is a lot of gas, and considering that I just made four sentries, that meant I have, what, uh, almost 800 gas right before this. If you look at that, if you, look, if you just take a still picture of this and you say, well, why do I have so much gas? It's it's kind of hard for a Protoss player to really know how much gas he will need, because... If 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 it's a Terran player, for example, and I need to make sentries back to back to block my ramp until I can get to uh, Colossus or Immortal, wherever it is that I'm going, I'm gonna need all that gas, and I would have used that gas up so much quicker than what I am using it right now. So, like I said, every Protoss unit is gonna be a very key strategic decision for you, and you want to have this gas just in case you actually need it as a Protoss player, because a lot of their get their units, especially in the early game, are gas intensive, like sentries and even stalkers. If I had been making stalkers back to back because I was facing mass stalker or because I was facing mass marines or something like that, this gas would have been used up completely. So this is more like for for this build, the one that I've shown you guys. This is a buffer. This is really. What, what units will we be warping in doesn't matter because you have the gas and the minerals for it. So yeah, uh, again, uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or requests, please let me know. If you feel that I've missed something, I'll try to try to make some annotations on it on the video. Definitely hope you guys have found this informative. I am very glad that uh, so, many people have been, so many people have been enjoying my channels. For those of you sending me a little bit of hate, it's okay. I appreciate it. I definitely take your comments into consideration, even if I do seem a little bit dismissive at times. But I definitely do listen to everything you guys are saying. 
please stick around, subscribe, rate, like, comment, share with your friends, check out other commentators' channels like Husky Starcraft, HD Starcraft, Day9. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I just broke 100 subscribers yesterday, and I've been getting so many views. I broke uh, 1,000 views on two of my videos, my two first videos, actually, uh, at least one of them. <laughs> I'm not sure if I broke it on the second one. And I'm definitely very, very happy with the reception you guys have given me. I will keep these coming as much as I can. I will try to get them a little bit more advanced uh, tutorials and things like that, more advanced strategies. Definitely want to try to be as spread out as I can. So I'm actually done a couple of, you know, for fun commentaries if you're interested in that. And I'm definitely still going to be making Beat the Rush videos. I just haven't seen very many rushes lately. And if you're wondering why I mostly just put games where I win, I... I, it's not that I, <laughs> it's not that I just want to win and I just want you to see me winning or anything like that. Uh, it's I, I try to be impartial and fair in terms of whether there is a good strategy seen or not. And a lot of times when I do fail, it's usually because I do something bad. And I don't want to be showing you guys just videos of like, oh, this is how you do not play, because I don't. I think that though that's reserved more for the personal. Like when when you fail, you know what you did wrong, or you have to go look at yourself what you did wrong. But definitely, if I want to show you guys something, I'm trying to try to show you something that was done right and not something that was done wrong. So my videos not quite like that. I uh, I try to get a, as much as I can. But anyway, I'm still rambling here, and this video is probably fairly long by now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right now, and I will with that. I will see you guys next time, and thank you guys for watching, and have a good day, everybody.